In this last part, we're going to build upon what we did until now and work a little bit with colors, see how we can mix them and add some nice shadows and uh, still have waves that react to the light with the normal map, etc. Let's get started. Now head to the fifth and last folder in this series, open the water with shadow and the water with shadow shader. So first we need some kind of color we're going to apply to our waves. At the top of the shader editor, we're going to add a new uniform vector four. This is the type for colors. We're going to call it shadow underscore color. It's not going to have a value by default. We're going to add a hint. So we can call that hint color to get a color. Now if you select your water and you head to the material, at the top you will get your shadow color. Select something like a purple or dark blue. It's going to be mixed with the water. So uh, it's going to be mixed in normal mode. It's not going to multiply your base color, although we can also do that. Reopen the shader and now we can head to the bottom. So right now we have the same code we had before with some function to calculate the sine waves UVs. We have our final wave UVs as well. And we're going to calculate some height of the waves to apply the shadows in the lower portions of it. So now how do we calculate our wave's height? We're going to use our texture-based offset and sine offset and we're going to take the Y component or the V component that kind of represents the height of our wave deformation. Now note that in this final version the texture-based offset and sine offset values don't have the offset height and sine wave height multipliers integrated. They are using the full 0 to 1 value range, which is what we want for our height map. We're going to do it like if we were working in an image editing program. We're going to create some kind of masks for our shadows and we want to use the full grayscale or 0 to 1 value range to blend between our shadow color and the base texture, the base waves texture. So let's calculate that. It's going to be waves height and it's a floating point value in this case. We're going to take our texture based offset, the V component or rather the Y component when we access variables and the sine offsets Y component. Now we want to visualize it because uh, it's a little abstract if we are working straight and only from code. So we're going to duplicate our color statement, hide the first one, and instead of sampling our texture, we're going to create a new color with a vector four. We're going to copy our wave's height a few times, three times to get a grayscale image, and the fourth component will be 1.0. That's the transparency, so we're making our waves opaque. Now let's unhide the shader to see what we get. This is good already. We get some kind of height effect, but it's a little too blown out. And the reason is both of our texture offsets are using the full 0 to 1 range. So when we add them, we get a value between 0 and 2. So we want to divide that by 2. So you can divide it by 2 or multiply by 0.5 and now you get a much nicer effect. You don't get those clipped whites like before. You can also multiply any of the effects to modulate your height and shadow a little bit. Now I've frozen the mask in time so we can manipulate it a little bit. You will note if you have experience working with digital painting programs or image editing tools that for a transparency mask, this one is too contrasted. We have a lot of black in there, meaning we would have a lot of shadows when we blend the shadow color. Imagine the shadow color will go in the black. The black areas represent the shadows and the top of the waves. We are going to make it the base value for our waves is a lot higher. By multiplying by 0.25 and adding 0.05, we make the minimum value for the waves a lot higher up. Now we've got a lot of bumpiness in the whites and we've got some pretty hard contrast on the texture overall. We can work with the waves this way. We have a decent height map, but I feel like the texture based offset is a little too strong. We can multiply it as well to make it a little less strong. 
Now, if you want to remove some of the lumps on the top of the waves, you can also do that using the max function. We're going to add a new line to make that calculation. The wave's height, we're going to multiply it by some value. So to scale it up, let me add a semicolon. And then you use not the max, but the min function to make sure that the value never goes above a given threshold, so 1.0. When you do that, you can't really see the difference because uh, you can't visualize values that are beyond 1.0 by default. There's no clipping visualizer built into the shader. Now doing this has one issue at the moment. It's going to sharpen the transition around the top of the wave. So it creates some kind of plateau effect, which we don't necessarily want. So I'm going to remove that line for now and keep what we have. Now there are more manipulations and techniques we can use to smooth out our waves, etc. But these are topics for more advanced shader tutorials. So now we were visualizing our wave's height. We're gonna go back to our texture and we're going to first store our main texture here, not in color, but we're going to store it in a variable called, so we need a vector four and we'll call it diffuse color. That's going to be the base uh, non-illuminated color for our waves. And then we're going to mix it with our shadow color. So let's do this. We're going to assign this to the color directly. There's a mix function, which is going to mix two colors together using some kind of of ratio or mixing value, mixing percentage, and it's a value between zero and one, like a mask, so our wave's height in our case. We're going to mix the diffuse color and the shadow color using our wave's height. Let's look at the result. There you go. You can see how our wave's mask here translates into this uh, shadow color on the waves. So right now we are mixing it straight into our waves. And if you want to multiply it on the waves instead, you can do that. So you can mix the diffuse color times the shadow color to get a multiply effect, which is going to darken parts of our waves. And this is exactly the multiply blending mode in a digital painting program, something you often use to create shadows or glaze effects. And now if I head back to the material, I can control my shadow color, use something a little lighter to let more of the water shine through. With that, I can go back to my time value and set it so we can animate the waves again to see our shadowed wave in motion. Thank you for getting there. That was the first shader series on the channel. Be sure to subscribe, to look at our Patreon page to support us. You can also find the Go to 3 course to get some more advanced tutorial and help GD Quest keep going. That said, be creative, have fun, and see you in the next one. Bye bye.